Meantime, I'd like to ask Andre Lenda to say a few words on behalf of the laureates and about how they chose this year's winners. Andre? Okay, I'm actually pretty scared to talk in this audience, but what can I do? Anyway, the thing, the thing is that we need to make an accept, I, I need to make an acceptance speech on behalf of all of these people. And it all started from some phone call uh, to me saying that, well, if hypothetically speaking, somebody would give you a, a prize like a $3 million, et cetera, would you accept it? And I say, if hypothetically speaking, somebody would do such a stupid thing, then I would consider it. <laughs> and then I thought that perhaps I'm making the most stupid uh, error, uh, well, uh, <laughs> joke of my life. And I say, yeah, 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 I would accept it. Um, so it seems that the total number of us uh, is only growing, and it's probably uh, appropriate to give a name to uh, this uh, well, bunch of people and also to those who will appear later. You know that in French Academy there were these immortals, the total number was constant. And uh, well, unfortunately, we are not immortals, but one name probably will fit fundamentals, because it's fundamental physics pride. Um, I remember that a year ago I was giving like introductory lectures on modern physics to uh, the class of people who are still undecided whether they take physics their major or not. And I was supposed to tell them that physics is so beautiful, physics is so wonderful, you must, uh, uh, well, accept it like your future profession. But instead of that, I told them, look, if you are still asking yourself whether you should be a physicist, my answer is you should not. You should not, because, you know, if you look around where, where I am in Silicon Valley, you are young people, you go there, you earn lots of money, physics never pays so much. And then you, uh, you know, it, it's all the time you're doing not something which other guys do, just like what I've noticed today at our excursion to LHC, how people sacrifice lots of their time and freedom and family just to devote uh, themselves for the work there. The same is true for theorists. And it's just uh, extremely difficult, extremely difficult for families. So if you can avoid being a physicist, do it. <laughs> because, for example, when you are a poet, let me explain you, when you are a poet, you cannot stop writing poetry because it's painful not to write poetry. If you are a sculptor, you cannot stop making sculptures because your life will be miserable if you don't do it. If you are a physicist, if you know that you're a physicist, you don't ask questions whether you should or should not be a physicist. So if you ask questions, don't do it, don't go there. Physics can make you happy. Physics is not going to make you rich. So I told them a year ago, and this year, the same class, a year again, <laughs> and I am repeating them the same story, la la la, if you have still questions, have any doubts, no, it's not my recommendation, physics can make you happy, physics cannot make you rich. And then suddenly, they all start laughing, ha ha ha, and I did not understand why. And later, oh my god, they know, okay. <laughs> so, apparently they know, so first of all, I am very grateful to those who made our students laugh. Okay, and second, the reason why we appreciate all of this, just like poets, just like musicians, everybody whose profession is appreciated, it gives them extra boost in thinking that what they're doing is probably right. Whether their life is difficult, whether it is not, but if somebody tells you, okay, we think that you're good, if your colleagues tell you, you think that it's good, it's good. And it is also good for the society when fundamental science, fundamental progress, intellectual achievements are appreciated. And for that, we are very grateful. <laughs>